Hi, I want to thank you for tuning in today to Gospel Kingdom TV. My name is Pastor Josie Weymouth, and the name of my uh, the name of my program is called Setting the Captives Free. The message that I'm going to do today is something that God put on my heart today, and the name of it is called We Are God's Masterpiece. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it out first, you know, talking about a song. The song is by Myra Brooke Welch, and it's called The Touch of the Master's Hand. Okay, this is the way it goes. It takes place at an auction. There's this auctioneer that has to sell this old, battered, scarred violin. And he says uh, that, you know, he, he didn't even know why he was going to do it, you know, but he had to do it. Okay, so he's holding it up, and he says... You know, what am I bidding, good folks? Who will give me a dollar? Who will give me two dollars? Who will give me three dollars for this violin? Going once, going twice, but nobody nobody said anything. But from the back of the room comes this old man. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he picks up the violin. And he starts to clean it up. He starts to tighten up the strings. And then he starts to play it. And as he's playing it, it sounds like a choir of angels singing. Then when he stops, he gives it back to the old the auctioneer. And the auctioneer takes it and he says, Who give me a thousand? Who give me two thousand? Who give me three thousand for this violin? Going once, going twice, it went it went for three thousand dollars. So the people started screaming and they say, Wait a minute, what changed its worth? And it says, and it says, a swift a reply came. It was the touch of the master's hand. See, because the one that had created that violin was that old man. He had created the violin. And that violin was very valuable. But it was scarred. It was battered. It was dusty. And it needed the touch of the master's hand. Okay, just like we are. In other words, that old violin was his masterpiece. He created it. Okay, just like some of us, we are God's masterpiece. So what is the picture that God is trying to paint for us here today? As we go through these scriptures, some of us have been battered, we have been scarred, we have been abused, and we, we don't think that we're worth anything. But he is our creator, and we are his masterpiece. So now, you know, as we go through these scriptures, we're going to find out the word of God says, and I'm, we're going to find the scripture later. It says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. In other words, what you don't know can hurt you. And we're going to go through the scriptures. What does God say about you? Okay? Not what people say about you. Not what, about, not what you think about yourself. What does God say about us? Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to start in Ephesians 2.10. And for those that are students of the word, just take notes. And then you can always go back and study them later. Okay, so what does God say about us today? Okay, it says in Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. So I looked up the definition for masterpiece, okay, in the Webster's, and it says, Anything done with extraordinary skill, okay? In other words, you were designed by the master artist. He is the master sculptor. We are individuals that, that are his masterpieces because we are created in his image. Listen to what the word of God says. We have to value, our value has got to be by the word of God. We got to listen to what the word of God says about us, okay? So let's keep going. Our next scripture is going to be in Genesis 1.27. It says, So God created man in his own image. In, his Im in the image of God created him, male and female. He created them. In other words, I looked up the definition for created in the Webster's. It means to bring into being, to cause to exist, to produce as a work of art. In other words, we have great worth because we bear the stamp of the Creator. We were created in His image. Okay, I know that I'm talking to somebody out there today. 
You know, that's why there's so, ma so much loneliness. There's so much depression and insecurities because we don't value ourselves. So what is God trying to tell us today? If you have to keep listening to this message over and over and over until it gets into your spirit, then things are going to change when you begin to see yourself the way God sees you. Okay, so let's keep, let's keep going. We need to know who we are in Christ because he is our creator. We are his masterpiece. So let's keep going. In other words, in Hosea 4, 6, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Recognize that what you don't know can hurt you. That, like I was saying, that's why there's so much loneliness and so, so much insecurities, you know, is because we don't value ourselves, okay? So we're to value ourselves by the Word of God. Our next scripture is in Ephesians 1.4. My messages aren't long, but I believe that you're going to get the message of what God is trying to bring across today. Ephesians 1.4 says, Just as He chose us in Him, before the foundations of the world. In other words, we didn't choose him. He chose us. It's awesome to think that before he even created the universe, he had you in mind and me in mind, okay? He had us in mind and he chose us. He chose us. He wants you to know that you are very valuable, very valuable. This is what the whole message is about, is God wants you to know that you are very, very valuable. We have an enemy out there that comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And he'll make you think that you're no good, you're not worthy, but that's a lie. So let's see what else the Word of God says, okay? I have another illustration. I like to use illustrations. I like to use pictures. Because to me, a picture is worth a thousand words, okay? My next illustration is talking about Michelangelo. In the 1400s from Italy, he was an artist. He was a sculptor. He was a painter, okay? The story is told when they brought a big piece of marble to Michelangelo. And he looked at it, and he looked around, and he said, My, isn't it beautiful? And a worker that was there was standing there, and he says, I don't, all I see is a big piece of marble. And then Michelangelo tells him, Oh, I forgot. You don't see what I see. He said, because it's, I see a statue of David there. And then the worker says, well, all I see is a piece of marble. But he said, it's because it's in my mind. And he says, and I'm going to translate it into this piece of marble. And that's what he did. So see, God sees us as a masterpiece. God does, a, a, he can look at us and see what we are going to become before we become it. Okay, so let me say that again. God sees us as a masterpiece. He can look at us and see what we will become before we become it. Okay, our next scripture is going to be in Psalms 139, and it's 13 through 14. Okay, and it says, You are the one that put me together inside my mother's body. And I praise you because of the wonderful way that you created me. Do you see what I'm telling you? What is he saying? He, you're not a mistake. You're not a failure. There's a reason why you're here. He is the one that created us. You are his masterpiece. Okay, let's keep going. The next one is in Jeremiah 1.5. It says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born. Okay? Before you were even born, the Lord had already called us and was shaping us and preparing us for his purpose and for his plan. See, there's a reason why you're here. You're here for a reason. And that's what God wants you to know, that you are very, very valuable to him. You're very valuable. Do you know that the Lord knows us so intricately that I'm a, I'm a beautician by trade, okay? And in Matthew 10, 30, it says the very hairs of your uh, the very hairs on your head are numbered we were taught that not everybody has the same hairs on their head people with fine hair have less hair people with thick hair or coarse hair have more more hair but yet he knows how many hairs are on your head talk about he is our creator he knows everything about us and he loves us 
Okay, let's keep going. In Paul, in Romans 8, 29 through 30, he said, For whom he foreknew, he also foreordained to be conform, conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the, the firstborn of many brethren. And he who he foreordained, them he also called, and whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. In other words, we are very valuable to God. We're very precious to God. You know, and like I was telling you, what I was telling you, that when you know your worth, things are going to change. Things are going to change when you know your worth. You'll understand the value that God is giving you. And I have an example of something that happened like that in the Bible, in Judges 6, 11 through 12. We're talking about Gideon. For those that have read about Gideon. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was an Oprah which belonged to Josh the Bizrite, while his son Gideon threshed the wheat and the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Valor means brave. It means strong. It means courageous, but there you see Gideon hiding from the Midianites because it was at a time where the Midianites were oppressing the children of Israel, okay? And here the angel appears to him, appears to him, and he tells a mighty man of valor. You know why? Because yet, in other words, because God sees the finished product. He calls those things that are not as though they were. Okay, in Romans 4, 17, that's what it says. And he called us those things that are not as though they were. You know, when Gideon began to see himself the way that God saw him, then he became that man and he went and had victory over the Midianites. You know what I'm saying? That's what God wants us to see. We're to value ourselves by the word of God. Not by, we, by what people tell you, not by what the enemy tells you, or even what you think about yourself. God's got the last word because he's the one that created you. Uh, he is the reason that you're here. Okay, so, you know, let's go on to, um, you know, in John 3, 16, what does it say? It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, he could have said God loved the world, but you notice that he said God so loved the world. That means you, he, that, that's all humanity, that's all for all humanity, but that's for you personally, for you personally. Okay, let's go over here to Revelations 1.5. 1, it says, to him who loved us and washed us from our own sins in his own blood. If you ever question your value, remember the scars, the nail prints are proof of his love for us. Remember, if you ever value yourself, remember how valuable that you are, that he came to shed his blood for you. The Father loved us so much that he sent his Son, and Jesus loved us that he went all the way. The Word of God says that for the, for the joy that was set before him, he went all the way. He could have called down thousands of legions of angels to come and rescue him, but he went all the way for you and for me. He'd rather go to the cross for us than to go to heaven without us because he is the only way that we're going to make it to heaven. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Nobody goes to the Father than by me. He is the only way. Okay? So let's, let's go on. You know, the devil wants you to question your value. He wants, to, he wants you to question yourself. But remember, like I said, remember... To, the, let's learn to value ourselves by what the Word of God says. Because we are very valuable. The value of, thing, of a thing is determined by how much someone would pay for that thing. God paid for you with the blood of Jesus. Okay, let me say that again. Okay, you are valuable. The value of a thing is determined by how much someone would pay for that thing. And, and God paid for you with the blood of Jesus. In other words, that makes you special. That makes you costly. Believe that. 
Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Okay? And my summary, like I said, my messages are not long, but I believe that we got the message that God was trying to tell us here today. Okay, I needed to hear this. Sometimes, you know, the enemy will work overtime to make us think that we're not value, valuable, that we're not worthy. That's why I said when you get a chance, continue to read, uh, listen to this tape over and over. I do it sometimes. I need to be reminded. I need to be reminded of who we are and how valuable that we are to God. My summary is that we are God's masterpiece. Okay, number two, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. In other words, he chose us in him before the foundations of the world. Okay, the next one, we are created in his image. We bear his stamp. Okay, and like I, like, like I said before, and I'll say it again, we are to learn to value ourselves by the word of God, what God says, okay? And just like that old violin, we are valuable because we are his masterpiece. We have been handcrafted by him. And you know that when he made you, you're an OG, you're an original. There's nobody like you. He broke the mold. He broke the mold when he made you. There's nobody like you. Do you know that even twins in the same womb do not have the same fingerprints? Okay? So I just want to encourage you today that you are loved. You are very valuable. And God loves you so much. So what I'm going to do now is I always like to do a couple of prayers. I'll pray over the message. And then I want to pray a salvation prayer for those that maybe you've never accepted the Lord into your heart. Maybe you're away from God. Okay? So let's pray over the message. Lord, we're so grateful for your word, Lord. Seal it in our hearts that we will be doers of the word and not just hearers only, Lord. We just thank you for reminding us through your word that we are very valuable, that we are your masterpiece. Lord, that we're an original, Lord, in Jesus, and that you love us with an everlasting love, Lord. We're thanking you for loving us that much, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I'm going to say a salvation prayer for those that maybe you've never accepted the Lord into your heart before, but God's touched your heart. And I always like to, to do this after my messages. Or maybe you're away from God. Maybe you've been a prodigal daughter, a prodigal son. The Lord is waiting for you to come home. He wants you to come home. You know, none of us are perfect. We're going to make mistakes. The Bible says that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The word of God says that a righteous man falls seven times, but then rises up again. So I want you to be encouraged. He's a God of a second chance, a third, a fourth, you know, so he's a merciful God. So just say this prayer for me, okay? If you're a prodigal son or a prodigal uh, daughter, the Father's waiting for you to come home. So pray this prayer with me today. Just say, Father, forgive me of all of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Now, if you pray this prayer right now for the first time, the angels in heaven are celebrating because your name is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And until next time, may God richly bless you. In Jesus' name.